Hey guys, welcome back to the Adobe Premiere Pro CC tutorial series. I'm your host, Gilly Gill. Today, we're gonna start diving into some more advanced topics, more specifically, Warp Stabilizer. So let's say you don't have a gimbal, but you're trying to get some really smooth footage. You do pretty good handheld. You can get a nice frame, but what if it's still just a little bit shaky? How can we smooth that footage out? Well, here comes Warp Stabilizer. Warp Stabilizer is a video effect that you can add to your files to really help smooth some things out. Warp Stabilizer usually does really good, but there are some clips that it doesn't really work well with, but we're gonna show you how to make it work. Let's dive in. Okay, so I've prepared a couple of clips to show you guys how Warp Stabilizer works. If I play back this first clip in the timeline, you'll see that we have just a handheld shot, kind of like a dolly sequence or a slide from the right to the left. It's a short clip, but you can tell that there's a little bit of handshake in this footage. It doesn't really look that smooth. All we need to do to apply the Warp Stabilizer effect is go to the project panel, click on effects at the top, open the video effects folder, scroll down to the distort folder, and at the bottom you'll see warp stabilizer. So just click and drag that, drop it right on top of your clip. And you're gonna see it analyze in the background. It's gonna have that blue ribbon on screen. And with that clip selected, if you just go up to the effects control panel and you scroll down a touch, you can see how warp stabilizer has been applied to this clip and it goes through and it counts the frames and it does its thing. What's happening when warp stabilizer is applied to a clip is it's gonna crop in a little bit because the, the program's gonna analyze where the horizon is and it will rotate and crop into your clip a little bit for every little movement that it has to make to keep your clip level, right? That's something to notice when you're gonna warp stabilize a clip. It's gonna punch in a little bit, so you're gonna lose a little bit of your field of view. And then it does change the rotation, so if it does have to rotate a little bit, it's gonna have to crop in that much to make sure that your clip is perfectly stable and level. After it's finished, you'll see a little orange ribbon that says analyzing. It will effectively be stabilized for you. So let's see what the default result has returned. Okay, a lot more smooth. And just to disable the effect, you can click this FX button right beside Warp Stabilizer and it'll have a line through it. So that means we've disabled the effect. So here's no Warp Stabilizer. And here is with Warp Stabilizer. Pretty good, right? So we've taken this kind of sliding shot and this was all handheld. We've got some camera shake in there and Warp Stabilizer was able to take that right out. Now let's take a look at a little bit of a different shot, a more straight on tracking shot that is quite shaky. Okay, so now as we play this clip back, you can tell this is pretty extreme. It's not very smooth at all. Very, very shaky. So let's do the same thing. Let's go over to Warp Stabilizer and click and drag and drop it right onto this clip. And like I said before, you can watch its progress right in the effects control panel and you can kind of get a guess as to how long it's gonna take. It doesn't usually take that long, but if you're working with like 4K clips, 1080, 60 frames, it will take a little bit longer, but it's not that bad. Okay, Warp Stabilizer has finished analyzing this clip, and now if we play it back, it is dramatically more smooth than it was before. So again, let's watch it without the effect. Pretty shaky. And let's apply the effect again. Super duper smooth. I found that if you use Warp Stabilizer on a clip that's like a super wide, it helps to be outdoors for some reason. I've used it when like doing realty videos. I can just float through a space and it seems to handle that pretty well. But if you're zoomed in and you're tight on a subject or if there's a lot of like abstract lines, Warp Stabilizer can get pretty confused. So this clip I've brought into the timeline is a UHD, that's 3840 by 2160. If you right click on your clip and check the properties, uh, we're looking at, see the image size here is 3840 by 2160. Our current sequence test one is 1920 by 1080 at 29.9 frames per second. 
You can tell that based on the source panel and the program output, it's cropped in, and that's because our sequence is 1920 by 1080, and we have a much larger clip here. In order to apply warp stabilizer to this clip, we're gonna have to shrink it. We wanna shrink this down so that it fits. So let's go to our effect controls, and we know that Ultra HD is gonna be 50% uh, 1920 by 1080. Now let's say we wanna go ahead and just drop our warp stabilizer onto this clip. Watch what happens. Oh no. We've got warnings. Warp stabilizer requires the clip dimensions to match the sequence. Okay, so let's take off warp stabilizer from this clip. We're gonna keep our scale at the 50%, and then we're gonna right click that clip and choose nest. And we can name this whatever we want, guitar clip. So now we have this nested clip, and you can tell it's nested because it's green. And you'll notice that in the project panel, your nested clip looks a little different. It's got its own like sequence icon. Now think about a nested clip as like a container. Inside this box, we've put our guitar clip, and then we can make changes to the box independently of the clip inside it. Make changes like the scale, the rotation, and we can keyframe all that stuff, the opacity, whatever you need to do to that clip. That way, inside your nested container, we can apply the stabilization to the nested clip, and it won't have any problems at all, watch. So we got everything inside of our nested clip, and now we're gonna just go to the effects panel and grab Warp Stabilizer yet again. Warp Stabilizer doesn't have any issue at all with analyzing and stabilizing this clip. Okay, fast forward through all that analyzing process. Now we have a nested clip that has warp stabilizer applied to it. So like I said before, there are some clips that really don't work very well with warp stabilizer. So let's see how warp stabilizer has handled this clip. Whoa-wee, wowie, wowie. So for whatever reason, you can see that warp stabilizer doesn't really like this clip a whole lot. There's a lot of warping going on in the background. I just, I, there's something about this clip with the lines in the background. It just doesn't really go very well with it. Yeah, that's not a very good result at all. We can try and tweak some settings in Warp Stabilizer. Let's see if we change the smoothness down a bit. Let's drop it down to like 16%. Let's see what that does. Oh my gosh, looks like they just swallowed a something you found in the woods or something. Don't eat the berries, kids. <laughs> Inside of Warp Stabilizer, we have parameters like smooth motion or no motion. You would choose no motion if you're trying to hold your camera and pretend like you're using a tripod, but we have motion here, so we don't want to use that. So you can't always count on Warp Stabilizer to fix your clips and posts because there could be something in the scene that just doesn't agree with the program and it doesn't always work. But in my experience, I've found that wide shots and if you're moving in a pretty steady direction, trying to keep your camera as still as possible, warp stabilizer will usually work pretty well. That's warp stabilizer in a nutshell. Let me know what you guys think. If you've tried warp stabilizer, if there's any situations where warp stabilizer didn't work for you, let's build a, a, a conversation down in the comments and kind of keep everyone informed about what works as far as warp stabilizer is concerned and what doesn't. And that's all for this one, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already with notifications on, and I will see you on the next one.